On March 13, 1997, I published an article called Who Was the Most Widely Recorded Guitar Builder Before World War II? Who Used His Instruments? This was all about Santos Hernandez and Richard Bernay, my longtime colleague, in his 2007 interview of uh, translation of Santos Hernandez made at the end of his life. Uh, he mentioned in the first uh, paragraph that Santos was the most widely recorded guitar maker. I document about 2,000 songs, so I'm going to read through uh, what I wrote. Santos Hernandez was born on November 1st, 1874. At the age of 10, he was an apprentice in a shop that made clothes for the Catholic clergy. Then at the age of 12, he began working in the guitar shop of Valentin Viudas Jr. Somewhat shortly after, he was working at the Rafael Ortega shop. Valentin Viudas and Rafael Ortega were on the same street, Calle Toledo. They were about two and a half blocks, about 23 numbers away, I think. Something like that, uh, 3255, something like that. I did it earlier video months ago about that. Um, and then he continued his apprenticeship in the taller of the sons of uh, Gonzales Hijos de la Gonzales, uh, whose father was uh, the maestro de Jose Ramirez starting in 1870. In 1893 he entered military service. He was in the artillery. After a stint of two and a half to five years depending on the source of your information, he entered the taller of Mamo Ramirez in 1898. He stayed there until Mamo's death in 1916. In 1912, he built an 11-string guitar for Antonio Jimenez Manjon. Manjon offered Mamo Ramirez substantially less for the guitar, though it was a special order. Mamo was disgusted with Manjon's ridiculous offer. Yeah, Manjon was saying, hey, can I make payments on it, etc. And Manhom passed away about seven years later. He had uh, been in the Rio de la Plata in Buenos Aires, Uruguay uh, region in 1893, had songs published in the early part of his career, what I might call the prime of his life. And so uh, Manmo was disgusted with Manhom's ridiculous offer and the guitar remained unsold. Somewhere between the time it was originally constructed and uh, 1913, it was converted back to a six string, not being a lot of buyers for 11 string models, that one can play J.S. Bach compositions at original pitch. In 1913, Andre Segovia came to the Malmo Ramirez shop, hoping to rent a concert guitar for his upcoming recital in Madrid. Upon hearing Andres bring out the glorious tones from the guitar. Manuel offered the intra, uh, instrument in a gift, telling Segovia, go out in the world and make my works better known by your marvelous playing. In 1924, the gift from Manuel was needing of repair, but Manuel was passed away seven years by then, and Segovia went to the Santa Fernandez shop at Aduana 27 in Madrid whereupon Andres was to learn all this time that the guitar had been made by Santos himself, Santos being the foreman of Manuel's shop at the time. Santos became the foreman after Antonio Viudas, uh, Emilio Pascual de Viudas, uh, had moved to Buenos Aires to open up his shop there. And Santos wanted to put his own label on the guitar, and Andres refused, saying, only put a label inside that states that you repaired it. To which Santos replied, my initials SH are to the right of the center to identify that I made it, though the label says Mamo Ramirez. This was the instrument that Andres Segovia was to begin his glorious recording career just three years later in 1927. There's also um, some, not speculation, but uh, he did some recordings in 1923-24 uh, in Cuba. 
as he traveled around the world. Uh, he recorded 20 songs in this instrument until 1937 when Andres began to use her Herman Hauser guitar on a rather permanent basis. Uh, Andres had used uh, Herman Hauser guitars as early as 1929. In concert, he played in Osaka, Japan in uh, early November of 1929, just after the stock market crash. Hauser took every opportunity to measure this 1912 Mamo Ramirez by Santos when Segovia would be concertizing in Germany. This viewing of the 1912 Santos went on from about 1923 to 1936, but Hauser also took into account his occasional viewing of Miguel Yobet's 1859 Antonio de Torres. Uh, so the greatest guitar of our epic, made in 1937, to quote Segovia, was actually a combination of a Santos and a Torres. So now I'm going to read of the virtuosos that made recordings uh, with Santos Hernandez guitars. You can see photos of uh, Ramon Montoya with maple tap guards on a 1916 Santos. I wrote here, one of the earliest flamenco virtuosos was Ramon Montoya. He was born, born on November 2nd, 1880. Though born in Madrid, far away from Andalusia, he grasped the ability to play flamenco so that by the time he was 14, he was employed in a Madrid cafe to accompany cantantes, singers. His virtuoso, his virtuosity grew as fast as his fame. His recording profile begins at about 1910, more or less. He was active until about 10 years before his death in 19. 49. The cantantes that he accompanied were listed by artists, then a quantity of songs. Uh, Ramon accompanied Nino de Almaden, eight pieces before song, four discs. On Jaleo, 13 pieces. Aurelio de Cadiz, 22 pieces. Juan Breva, uh, born in, I think in the 1840s, uh, 10 pieces. Uh, Nino de Cabra, 30 pieces. El Canario de Colmenar, 8 pieces. 6 pieces for Manuel Centeno. Uh, Jose Sapero, 30 pieces. El Cojo Luque, 2 pieces. El Cojo de Madrid, 4 pieces. Don Antonio Chacon, uh, 26 pieces. Chaconcito, 12 pieces. Antonio Grau, 8 pieces. Fernando E. Herrero, 11 pieces. Nino de la Isla, 20 pieces. Nino de Jerez, 10 pieces. Nino de Linares, 17 pieces. Nino de los Lobitos, 14 pieces. The Bernardo de los Lobitos. Pepe Marchena, 133 pieces, an incredible quantity. Nino de las Marianas, 21 pieces. Nino de Medina, 23 pieces. Juan Mohama, to, uh, 10 pieces, Nino de Mol, del Museo, 16 pieces, Manuel Pavon, uh, 18 pieces, Nino de los Pienes, uh, 88 pieces, El Peña Hijo, 44 pieces, El Personita, 8 pieces, Nino de Priego, 2 pieces, 2 pieces, Nino de la Puebla, 16 pieces, Jose Rebollo, uh, 10 pieces, Luisa Requejo, uh, 10 pieces, Nino de la Ribera, 3 pieces, Encarna Salmarón, 4 pieces, El Sota, 10 pieces, La Trianita, 20 pieces, Juanito Valderrama, who went on to make LPs in the 50s. Uh, 25 pieces, Manuel Vallejo, Vallejo, uh, 26 pieces, Juanito Verrera, uh, excuse me, Juanito Verrea, five pieces. I need to tell you, these quantities and these names came from the uh, uh, Dicenario Encyclopedico del Flamenco, a two-volume series that's out of print. I highly encourage you to get it. Uh, I bought it about 30 years ago, paid $225 for it then. 
uh, one of my colleagues recently got a copy. So they can be found on the secondary market. I think that was published about 1987, 88. This accounts for uh, 765 recordings on a Santos Hernandez flamenco guitar. We must also add 24 solos that Ramon did in 1936, making a total of 789 compositions. Uh, in the uh, discography at the end of the uh, Dicenario Encyclopedico del Flamenco, in the back it mentions the titles and it mentions the style. If I recall correctly, uh, Ramon Montoya recorded at least a solia, my favorite. You always hear me play a solia when I play a guitar on my videos. He recorded a solia at least 60 times with these singers. Our next individual who played with a uh, Santo Hernandez with Nino Ricardo. Our next immortal figure is Nino Ricardo. He was born in Sevilla on July 1st, 1904. At 13 years of age, he, be play he began playing in the Salon Vigil in Sevilla in 1924. He began his long career by accompanying La, La Nina de los Pienes, the Girl of the Combs, and her brother Tav uh, Tomas Pavon. Nino Ricardo was extremely influential guitarist, having his fingerprints in the playing of Paca de la Silla. He died on April 14, 1972, my birthday. The great cantantes he accompanied were El Chato de Valencia, two pieces, Carmen Florido, two pieces, La Guerita, two pieces, Nina de Jaén, four pieces, El Lavao de Paredes, two pieces, El Limpio, eight pieces, Manolo El Malagueño, six pieces, Manolo Manzanilla, four pieces, El Mochuelo, died 1937, unknown quantity of about 350 songs. He was recording uh, first decade of, 19th, uh, of the uh, 20th century. I have some of his uh, early recordings, uh, 78s. I started collecting 78 RPM records in March of 1968. Nino Olivares, six pieces. Pepe El Moro, two pieces. Palanca, ten pieces. El Peña Hijo, 24 pieces. Pericone de Cadiz, seven pieces. Platerito de Alcala, eight pieces. La Andalusita, 12 pieces. El Cojo Luque, six pieces. Manala, Manuel Viejo, ten pieces. La Nino de los Pienes, 41 pieces, Tomas Pavone, 12 pieces, Pepe Marchena, 18 pieces, Manuel Centeno, 10 pieces, Jose Sapero, 24 pieces, Nino Isidro, 14 pieces, Nino de Alcala, 12 pieces, Paco Mazaco, 10 pieces, Bernardo El de los Lobitos, as uh, the small wolves, 11 pieces, Nino de Gloria, 13 pieces, Nino de la Huerta, 12 pieces, Nino de Alfalfa, 6 pieces, Pepe Pinto, 72 pieces, Paco El Boña, uh, 8 pieces, Emilio uh, Abadia, 4 pieces, Nino de la Calza, 8 pieces, Canaleas de Puerto Real, 42 pieces, Rafael Cañete, four pieces, El Carbonillo and Carbonario, 23 pieces, Sepero de Triana, eight pieces, Triana being a neighborhood in Sevilla, Corito de San Julian, 11 pieces, Coro de Utrera, two pieces, Nina de Puebla, nine pieces, Rafael de Jerez, two pieces, Antonio Rengel, uh, 16 pieces, Nino de la Ribera, two pieces, El Sevinito, four pieces, El Seviano, 40 pieces, Juanito Valderrama, 56 pieces, uh, Juanito Fereja, uh, 20 pieces, Nino de Velez, two pieces, Nino Villanueva, eight pieces. So this brings another 650 recordings done on a Santos Hernandez flamenco guitar. 
Our next artist is Manolo de Badajoz. The next figure of extenso recordings is Manolo de Badajoz. He was born in the city of Badajoz in 1892. He was a disciple of Javier Molina and Don Ramon Montoya. Manolo died in Madrid in 1962. The important cantante singers that he accompanied were Nino de Alcala, two pieces, Nino de Almaden, three pieces, Nino de Alora, two pieces, Al Americano, 40 pieces. La Andalusita, six pieces, Angelio, uh, dieciocho pieces. Uh, 18 pieces, Andres Heredia El Bisco, four pieces, Pepita Caballero, Caballero, four pieces, Lola Cabello, two pieces, Nino de Cabra, 12 pieces, Nino de la Calza, six pieces, Canaleas de Puerto Real, six pieces, Nino de Caracol, Manalo Caracol, eight pieces, early works by that great singer. El Carbonario, uh, 19 pieces. Estrellita Castro, 2 pieces. Monte, uh, Manuel Santano, Centeno, 15 pieces. Jose Sapiro, uh, 16 pieces. Uh, 16 pieces. El Cojo de Pomares, 4 pieces. El Caruco de Algeceta, 6 pieces. El Cuacua, 1 piece. El Chato de Jerez, one piece, El Chato de Valencia, two pieces. El Chato de las Ventas, 24 pieces. Luis El Chulito, two pieces. And Carna La Finito, two pieces. Nino de la Flor, 10 pieces. Paco Flores, two pieces. Nino de la Fuente, six pieces. Nino de, la, de Fuentes Andalusia, six pieces. Rosario Garcia, eight pieces. Nino de Gloria, uh, 14 pieces. El Garito de Triana, 10 pieces. Gracia de Triana, 10 pieces. La Guilita, 10 pieces. Uh, Jarito, two pieces. Miguel Herrero, two pieces. Nino de la Huerta. Uh, 60 pieces, Isabelita de Jerez, uh, ocho pieces, eight pieces. Nino Isidro, 10 pieces. Uh, Olimpio, six pieces, Nino de Linares, 10 pieces, Bernardo de los Lobitos, two pieces, Pepe Marchena, four pieces, El Malagueño, eight pieces, Paco Mazaco, eight pieces, Pepe El Molinero, eight pieces, Paquita Moran, four pieces, Nino del Museo, four pieces, Mariquita Ortega, two pieces, Palanca, 16 pieces, Nino de los Pienes, 12 pieces, El Peluso, um, 18 pieces, um, 18 pieces. El Peña Hijo, 34 pieces. Jesus Peru Sanz, 34 pieces. Pepe Pinto, 28 pieces. Nina de la Puebla, 22 pieces. Jose Rebollo, 10 pieces. Antonio Rangel, Three pieces, Nino de la Ribera, four pieces, El Rojo de Salamanca, two pieces, El Sevenito, two pieces, Jose Suarez, eight pieces, Nino de Talavera, four pieces, Juanito Varea, ten pieces, Nino de Vilex, eight pieces. So this comprises another 636 recordings recorded on a Santos Hernandez flamenco guitar. Next on our journey of those who used the Santos is Luis Maravilla. He was born in Sevilla in 1914. He and his wife Pilar Calvo were the principals in the 1952 motion picture Duende y Misterio. But well before that time he accompanied the following artists. Pilar Calvo, which is his wife, 
uh, two pieces El Cojo de Huelva, two pieces Jose Greco, two pieces Roque Jarito Montoya, four pieces El Gafas Manolo, uh, two pieces. Uh, Luis also recorded four guitar solos, Danza Oriental, Tanguillo de Cadiz, and two Zambras. This adds another 16 pieces on a uh, Santos Hernandez flamenco guitar. Also in the late 50s, a 12-inch LP that uh, Luis Maravilla uh, was used as an accompaniment to a written method book. I have that, but I haven't looked at it in decades. Javier Molina is our next artist. He was born in Jerez de la Frontera, Cadiz in 1868. He probably played in more coffee cantante environments than anyone else due to the time in which he was born, 1868. A notable singer that he accompanied was Mamal Torre, very famous singer for four songs. I made a mistake including Guillermo Gomez. He had a headstock on his guitar that's the photo on his CDs and my uh, music editions that I published, 1893, uh, excuse me, 1993 to 1995. I put out three books of his works. I acquired those in Mexico City in 1987 from his granddaughter. She was running a, a pharmacy, gave people uh, shots in the butt for dysentery while I was there. So I went through about three boxes of sheet music and I took all the solos that I didn't have. I should have bought actually everything because I missed out on a few things. So I goofed and I made the mistake of including him uh, of 20 pieces, but he must have, on his recordings for Columbia Records in 1928, uh, he must have had a fine guitar made in Mexico City. Uh, Francisco Gonzalez guitars had made their way to uh, Mexico. You can see that in the construction of some guitars uh, made in uh, Paracho decades ago. I also wrote that Paco de Lucena had a prodigious student, Rafael Marin, who in 1902 published a flamenco method in Spain. I have a copy of that. Rafael played a Mamo Ramirez guitar, flamenco guitar, but at the time Santos had already been working in Mamo's shop for five or six years. As to who actually made Rafael's guitar, your guess is as good as El Mio. Spanish for your guess is as good as mine. So we have about 2,000 recordings uh, on Santos Hernandez uh, flamenco guitars, 20 of those being, or 24 of those at least made by Andres Segovia as well. <laughs> 